outside, take care of the business. I'll be right back. Going outside, take care of the business. I'll be right back. Going outside, take care of the business. I'll be right back. Take care of business. I'll be right back. Go on outside. Take care of little business. I'll be right back. Go on outside. Take care of little business. Yo. I'll be right back. It's your boy Loser Lou. Just chilling on the west side. Feels great tonight. The weather's amazing. It's October 6th. It's like 10.45 p.m. Uh, been having a good month. A good, nice, good, sober month. Had to open up a Zertronic. My bro right there. Well, shoot, man. <clears throat> Got my boy Charles here with me. Cheers, the Yerba Mac. Cheers. Shout out Yerba Mate, organic, guyaki. <laughs> Amazing drink. So I've been, uh, uh, Charles, if they want to get a hold of you, how do they get a hold of you? Well, um, you could follow me at uh, cosmic.ruination at Instagram? Is that right? No, at Cosmic. There you go. Hey, can you spell it out there? Yeah, C-O-S-M-I-C dot R-U-I-N-A-T-I-O-N. Dang, it's hard to spell. <laughs> I thought it was a cool name. I got it from this this Christian black metal band who described their, um, their music. One of the themes was uh, Cosmic Ruination. I was like, yo, what does that even mean, bro? I think it was about like, I guess like, like if you, um, well, like your spirit could like be obliviated or annihilated, like, and it was just real dark. I thought it was cool. I mean, it, it's pretty dark. <laughs> it's too, it might be too dark. Man, I was watching a, what is it? Uh, the Shining, the, the, the one after The Shining, the new one that came out. Oh yeah. I haven't seen I it. For, I forgot the name of it. Dude, it's dope. Dope. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Like. I took it, you know, as a continuation. I didn't try and put anything more to it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And it, I don't know. I thought it was good. Fire. I forgot the name of it though, so I feel so dumb. It just came out. Uh, no, it's probably been out for a minute. All I know is, uh, uh, they do a flashback, and you remember at the end of that Zayo album or what that Zayo song where it has like the. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a Liberate to ex- yeah. It's from that album. Yeah. Well, like the that noise is a uh, the little little dude going from like. The carpet to the wood. Yeah, in the hallway. On yeah, yeah, exactly. Wheel. Yeah, and I, I, don't, I don't know what made me brought, brought me onto that, but I just remembered that. <laughs> <laughs> well, not because because Zayo. I mean, that was a dark record, bro. When it came out, yeah, man. That Liberate, because we fucked with that back in the day. Yeah, man. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember we would jam that. <clears throat> and um, we jammed that other one though, the one with the fucking fire coming out of that dude's face. Oh, I thought that was the same one. Nah, the, 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 that was like. They had like four records before Liberate. Dude, all I know is that band has gone through members. It's just like, oh, wow, okay. Bro, they're still putting stuff out. It's real dope. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I saw that. Yeah, they, uh, I don't know how they're still around too, bro. Like, but I guess because the the community still really supports them. And they have that, they have Russ Cogdale, the, you know, the homie. I mean, that's, that's dope. Like, they're still doing it. It is dope. It is dope. And and I think their records get darker. They, 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 like most of their records are like because like they used to be explicitly Christian. Yeah, I remember that. Like their first singer or whatever was like a pastor. But no, their first two <laughs> singers yeah, were wow. like straight pastors, like Bible teachers. And then Dan came in. That's the record that we got on. Like he he was a Christian too, but he dealt with a lot of like like suicides in his life around that time. And so the record really captures a lot of that. And all the records after that are just like they've gotten like they've gotten gradually more dark, but I th- I still think they're about like Jesus. I just don't know. It's just so dark. Like I can't even like. T- <laughs> <laughs> so I know you know a lot about different religions. How'd you end up studying? I'm like, how many how many different religions have you studied? 
I mean, like I was raised Catholic, like most people in San Antonio. Um, and I had this Pentecostal aunt. She was like really hardcore, like Protestant, like against the Catholic church, but like really into the spirit. And like, she like didn't make me, but like encouraged me to like read the Bible and talk to me about the scriptures. <clears throat> and then like we prayed together and I've always been into Jesus just from like a, like on GP, like the, the general principle of like just giving yourself to others and like trying to like, I don't trying know, to be better. Trying to be better. Exactly. Yeah, Took the words yeah, yeah. right out of my mouth. And then like, I was like disenchanted with the Catholic church. Cause I was, you know, I don't know. It didn't make any sense. I, no one had really taught me things, even though I went to like CCD, it was called CCD. Yeah, I remember and, that I did the same thing. Yeah. But like no one ever really went deep into the Bible. And so I, when I got with the brothers, you know, studying with Hebrew Israelites, <coughs> Hebrews, Messianic Jews, I got really into the Torah, really into like the Bible, Old Testament, studying Hebrew. And um, so I've studied quite a bit, man. I've also read the Eastern Buddhists, you know, Buddhist, Buddhist texts, Hindu texts. Um, but, you know, I still sort of stick with the Bible. So I st I've studied a lot, bro. You know what I mean? And that's why I'm a teacher. So, like, I gotta, I gotta, like, teach things. You know what I'm saying? What do you, what do you teach? I teach literature and history. Oh hell yeah, bro! Let's go. Yeah, man. You know. So God's really been just working with me all these years, man. I don't know why. He probably should have let me go by now. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Nah, you're a great guy. Uh, I guess. I'll never claim it, but sure. <laughs> So, yeah, so I met Charles at what, Jordan, Jordan Middle School. It was like eighth grade. What year was that? Like, like man. 90, 90, 94? No, maybe like 96, Must 97. Must have been 96. 96, 97, maybe. Eighth grade, 96. Like 90, yeah, 96, 97, somewhere around there. Yeah. And I remember one time, no, it was the first time I met you. You, you were mad or something. You gave me the ugliest look. Yeah, because like you. <laughs> yeah, because you. He called me a, a slur. I did not call you anything. You were at the water fountain. Bro. <laughs> we got mad, but then we became we, we, beca I, we became really cool, man. Like yeah, we became really close. Really close, like right after that, bro. Yeah, like almost immediately. Yeah, you know, and like because similar style, similar musical interests. I think you rage against like the machine. Yeah, you had a rage shirt, and I was rage like, against right, the cool. machine. You know, this is us. This is this is me. <clears throat> Matt James, you know what I'm saying? Oh, the homie. Man. <laughs> man. Good old good old, good old San Antonio back then. Remember remember there was nothing out there? There was nothing out there, man. It was just Jordan and like <laughs> and like Christian Evers at that other school. And like maybe a couple mobile homes or some shit. There was nothing. And that's why I think like we were suburban, right? So like we had we were in the suburbs, like there was nothing in the suburbs either. So when the internet dropped, man, that was like our whole world. But yeah. before that, it was just CDs and like MTV and Nickelodeon and, and Nintendo. Like that's all we had. That, that yeah, was man. Life. Like remember, like like new music would drop on MTV. Like I don't even think they play music anymore. Nah, I, I don't know what MTV is. MTV still a thing? I know it's, it's definitely still a thing. I know that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I was raised on Nickelodeon and MTV. So. Dude, I st like uh, it blows my mind. Us, the dude who did Rugrats. Yeah. The music for Rugrats. Yeah. He's in Devo. No way. Yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> Yo, Devo is still dope, bro. Yeah, man. I mean, you could throw some cuts on and just be like, oh, this is, this is, that, this is that fire, bro. It always tripped me out that it was just like, damn, he's getting Nickelodeon money too. Hell yeah. That is dope, man. Devo's hard, man. Devo's hard, and then the, whoever did the uh, Revenge of the Nerd soundtrack, bro. Some oh, of the, some man, of those I don't cuts remember on, that. Listen, some of those cuts are... Because it's like kind of that 80s nerd, like computer Spock rock. Like, <laughs> bro, I just remember this is so horrible. I'm so sorry, dad. Uh, my dad kind of resembled Booger when I was a little kid. I called him Booger and he got all pissed at me. <laughs> but damn, uh, <laughs> they resembled each other, you know what I mean? They yeah. had like a little fro and the little stash and everything. <laughs> Yo, that was a trip, man. Booger was, yeah, that 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 whole the whole Revenge of the Nerds was a trippy movie. That, how, how many was how many was there? There was, it was a like, bunch of them. No, there was like three, but I think only the first one really was was mattered. They had that. 
they had all the all the dope cuts on that one, man. The alpha betas, you know what I'm saying? They had the Revenge of the Nerds. Nerds. No, Revenge I don't remember of any nerds. of the music, bro. <laughs> Come on, bro. You got to get on it. Man, I haven't thought of those movies in forever. And what, what was another good movie from the 90s? Uh, remember the well, Ernest that, well, movies? That, that was the 80s. First of all, oh, yeah, sh- you're right. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. just remember it always being on that, and like back to school was always on TV, <laughs> uh, like Rick, on USA. Spaceballs, in the '80s. Spaceballs with Rick Moranis, John Candy. Yeah, you know man. What I'm saying? And then what else? Oh, uh, Real Genius, Problem Child, Problem Child. Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, that was dope. Dude. <laughs> That, that movie was always on USA, all of them, with even I, with, with Kramer on it. I forgot about USA. But at the end of Problem Child, there was, he gets like an adopted sister, right? She's like a problem, too. Oh, isn't it Problem Child, too? <laughs> Jeez, all I know is I'm super happy, like, I got to be alive and experience life before, like, internet took over everything. And, like, social media took over everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like, that's just kind of weird. Like, all of them, all the different social medias, like. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, things have changed pretty quickly. I mean, I mean, I just remember even with you, bro, like hanging out, chilling, listening to CDs and just like kicking it like on like on a real level without all this other distraction. You know, back in the day, you hung out with your friend, you put on a CD or. I keep saying CDs, but that's because I, I, I mean, that's, that's what we were raised. I, I mean, that's what we had. I had tapes too, but you, unless you had the boombox, you couldn't share the music because <laughs> you were in your Walkman. You know what I'm saying? But then yeah. you put the CD on, man. You just kick it, listen, play some games. Yeah, things were a lot more like I don't know, simple, down to earth. All this other, you know, new stuff, man. I feel sorry for these kids. They don't know. Now, now, now we're in a Black Mirror simulation. For sure. Yeah, Black Mirror has a trip, too. That one San Junipero, man. I don't know if you saw that episode. Which one? It's the one where, like, uh, those two girls, man, they, like, fall in love with or whatever, and, like, and like um, they choose to download their mind onto a mainframe so they could live forever. Oh, I think I remember <laughs> what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of, all those, all those episodes are really trippy. Yeah. And the song at the re- the song at the end of that episode was like, "Heaven is a place on earth." Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh I remember. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I, I I wish I could figure out what song that was. I can't remember, but I remember. Yeah, that that no that episode actually scares me to this day because I think that's where technology is headed. The one the one that scared me is the one where they would grade you in social interactions. Yeah, that's a trick. That one was like. But that that wow. go, that goes down, right? That happens in like China and stuff. What, I don't, I don't understand. What do you mean? Like that's a real thing? Yeah, social credit. Yeah, that's a real thing, bro. I don't know. Explain, bro. Drop, drop, I, drop it. I up. mean, like, like because all your all your search is recorded, so anything you search for is recorded on their blockchains, right? So the blockchains are those digital ledgers. They like maintain all data and they store it. And you have your own like digital profile, a social ID, and um, it's sort of like a techno tyranny. Huh. You know what I'm saying? So like your social credit either goes up or down based on like what you search for, what you buy, the kind of content that you're consuming. That's a trip. Whoa. Yeah, I had a. I I I like that's real. Yeah, I mean, I had a friend who um when i was in massachusetts um she was from shenzhen china and she was in massachusetts i think like looking at mit or something like that but um she had mentioned all that to me wow yeah i mean so like you know we like you know truth is always stranger than fiction yeah, yeah, so yeah. like you know what we see on the if we see it on the if we see it on in movies or we see it in a show it's already like 10 years late. You think? Yeah. <laughs> Man, all I know is that's a trip. That whole, like, I just remember in that episode, they would they, if, if they didn't like the way you looked, they graded you. 
Well, isn't that like how humans work? How humans are anyway? Yeah, but I mean, like, it doesn't really matter, though. It doesn't matter at all. You know it what I mean? Doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Remember that song? <laughs> Chemical Brothers, right there. That's right. First album, bro. <laughs> yeah, man, I remember all that. But yeah, man, it just that that that's a trip that it actually means something. Like, I I that blows my mind. Like, I don't know, I work I work at the mall. Yeah. So I used to like, work in the mall. So I got to say, yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. So, like, you, you know how it is. You, you got to size someone up. For sure. Because you got, like, other people coming in. So you got to figure out, like, yo, who's worth my time to, like, try and make some money off of? For sure. So it's like you just got to, like, just look at people in base, like, damn, should, should I approach this person or this person? Yeah. I mean, you're running, like, a probability game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. Yeah. So you're just looking at everything, like, top to bottom. Yeah, in that in that scenario though, with regard to sales, I mean, I don't I know. Mean, that's a quick judge. It's a quick judge. You got to figure out who's really ready to buy or who's just looking. Yeah, and it's a tough one, man, because sometimes you're just taking a risk. You know, I know like, sometimes you just spend you know ten minutes doing something, and then they're just gone. Ah, never mind. It's just <laughs> like, <sighs> let me get back to work. Yeah. <laughs> well, the nice thing is, I mean, like. If they're there, they're kind of ready to buy, right? Sometimes. Like, I mean, and don't get me wrong, of course, you could tell pretty quickly when someone's broke. They're just chilling in the mall. Oh, yeah. They got nothing yeah. else to do. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you see the same dude every Thursday at and two. It's, it's the same guy that's always like, hey, uh, can I see that one on the yeah, very top? <laughs> You're like, you see it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've actually said that to someone before, and they, they got really upset. I was just oh, like, okay. what do you... What do you mean right. you need to see it? It's right up there. Do You're it. seeing it. Like, Just look up. <laughs> <laughs> I try my hardest not to be that guy, man. No, I like, I ain't gonna lie. Some days, like, I'm just so done with it that I'm just like. Sales is a tough gig, man. You know, but it's um, it's a good place to learn about humans. I think it's the best, like, psychology sort of training ever. You know, I mean, the, the mall is just a great place to learn about people. I mean, like, sure. like, I don't know. What do you what, what year, we were in the same mall. What years were you at Ingram? Um, I probably started at Ingram like in 07, maybe. Okay, okay. So back then, how many times did you have like gun scares or anything? Did y'all ever have Never. that? Did the mall ever go on lockdown? Not really, bro. That didn't start until... Oh, like, yeah, I've been, I've been at the mall for the past like three, four years. Yeah. Well, I've had like two, two scares. Yeah. One major one, one just like... You heard something go off across the mall. Yeah, you know what I mean, like, but the the one the other the one that like about a month ago that was kind of crazy. Like they locked yeah. down the mall, we had to shut all our doors. Like, cops were walking through with AR fifteens. Yeah, and they were ready, bro. Yeah, like, they were ready. For sure. <laughs> it, that wasn't a thing until I got back from Atlanta, man. I'd say like around twenty fifteen. That's when things started kind of, you know, amping getting, up. getting a little wilder. Yeah, because because that thing went down and at Rolling Oaks. You know what I'm saying? We're like. Oh, that, dude, like, bank robbery or something, right? It was, right? like, a robbery, bro, and some dude lost his life. And it was a trip, man, because, you know, my homie was there and he saw it all go down. And, like, yeah, I mean, all of this this paranoia, bro, like, in the last seven years or so, a lot more paranoia just on a social level. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's all, like, amped up. <laughs> Everyone's amped up. They don't even know why, you know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, I mean, if you if you listen, I I really don't watch the news or anything, but I assume they're just talking about the war that's going on or the scare, you know what I mean, from overseas. Or well, if you keep us frightened, you know what I mean, like you keep us controlled, right? And then I mean, on top of that, like we are in Texas, where everyone has a gun. That's true. Every, I mean, that's why our road rage is fucking crazy. <laughs> I don't even care anymore. Cut me off, bro. <laughs> Just don't fucking, don't hit me. I don't care. I be driving like an old man because I drive, you know, I got my three daughters, man. I be driving to school. And, oh, okay. And, you know, I be driving like an old man because I just, uh, I can't, you know, I can't afford any, any, you know, dumb stuff. <laughs> man, I'm like a sucker for, like, accidents. I've been in a few accidents. but Yeah, man, that whole road rage thing, though, like, uh. I just see videos online where it's all happening in Houston, 
Yeah. People pulling guns out. People are, are yeah. Well, people are people. You know, shout out to Depeche Mode, man. People are people. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've always been like um, unstable. You know what I mean? Like, so I think our our whole goal in life is to try to find something to anchor us, keep us stable. That's the hard part. Yeah, I it's guess really you're right. it's hard to find an anchor. It is, no, you're right. It For is. Real? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's hard to find an anchor that's like uh, you know reliable. Well, reliable. I mean, that's the whole point of an anchor to be reliable. For sure. Like, yeah, like, yeah, man, I totally agree with you. And I mean, drugs are not a good anchor. <laughs> <They're not> good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, right? Like, the dopamine, right? Dopamine releases. Um, dopamine, dopamine, dopamine releases everything. Like that's that's precisely the problem, though, because it's, it's an un, <laughs> it's a, it's an unreliable anchor because it's uh, it's finite. Uh, it, it only it has a half life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 it is everything. I know. <laughs> well, there's a reason why it exists, right? Like uh, we're sort of hardwired with it. And I think the question is why we why we have it. Why do we have dopamine release and releasing and serotonin and cortisol and stressors humans are wild dude yeah man we are wild just think like i don't know one day one day we just got got it together yeah that's all oh okay thanks but yeah like humans i don't know man i'm just scared of this whole like i guess i am a little afraid of the whole like overseas thing going especially since i heard missiles were fired at like what like not at japan but over japan yeah i think uh north korea launched something over japan recently a couple days ago like there's a whole lot of things going on you know then then you hear putin putin wants to drop nukes on us or whatever like i guess it kind of i mean like our whole lives we've been in like war scenarios huh we just thrive in war is that the whole thing (coughs) Yeah, so like the military-industrial complex um, keeps America in in global global superiority, global dominance. You know, like if there's a war to be fought, you know, we can make money off weapons and missiles. And so, if there isn't a war, then h- how can we remain dominant? Yeah, man. I've, I've, now that I think about it, as long as I've been alive, I've always been. Heard you know in the back of my head different different wars from Cold War to like Desert Storm to yeah, the Homo sapien is everything. A, the Homo sapien Crazy. Homo sapiens are a warring species, right? So like the first um, family. I mean, if you're just using the Bible for a moment, Adam and Eve had had a pair of twins in the beginning. Um, that ended up in a murder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right out the gate in the biblical story. So like. What does that mean about us as a species? You know what I'm saying? So, of course, like, before our time, it was world, it was Vietnam. Before Vietnam, it was Okinawa. Uh, before, Korean War. Uh, sorry, Korea, yeah. Before Korea, it was uh, World War Two, or the Cold War, and then, then World War Two, and then World War One, <clears throat> and then we had the Civil War, and then we had the American Revolution, so... But man, it's just, it's just like I've never, I've never really sat and thought about it, thought about it. But yeah, our, the whole time I've been alive, we've been, we've been feeding the soul like crazy. I guess, I, like you know, you're right. That's humans in general. But yeah, man, I'm tired of living in this constant fear. I wish it, it, it would be nice to just, just be able to take a year of just a, br- a breather, you know? Yeah. Just a year, nothing too long. Everyone get along just for one year. Excuse me. Salut. Thanks, man. Um. No, I feel I, 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 I feel that, and you know, if, if you would indulge me, you know, I, I have a lot of like Bible scriptures stuck in my brain because that's how I kind of live. That's how I keep my own sanity. But there's this one scripture that says, "Perfect love casteth away fear." So, like, you know, if I if I try to live, I mean, of course, it's easier said than done. But like, if I try to live my life to love others, to try to be there for others my wife, my kids, my family, my friends, my community, then I don't have to worry or I don't have to be afraid because I have a purpose and I'm like trying to help people. You know, I think that was like, I thought that was Jesus's whole message. You know what I mean? 
Hey, I thought it was cool, so I'm leaving Ingram Park Mall today. And uh, you saw that video. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. Where was that? So they, they, they get together all the time right there, Ingram and 410. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they get together and they just, you know, they're spreading the word or whatever. Yeah. Most days I'm usually just sitting there with my windows rolled up like, cool, and I just turn it up. Today I just kind of like, I rolled my window down for a second. The lady started pointing at me, so I started recording her. For sure. And uh, she just had a bunch of nice stuff. So it was, yeah. cool. it was cool. It was cool for a change, like having something positive rolling my window down for instead of just giving someone some change and dipping, you know, like for sure. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah. Cause it could be a lot worse. Right. Yeah, um, I, and my hats off to people that are out there, you know what I mean? Like in the ministry, or the, trying to ev- evangelize, you know I mean? A lot of people are angry with, with God. They're angry with religion. They're angry with Christianity, the way it's manifested itself over the last, you know, 50 years or whatever, but, like, those, there's some universal truths, you know, to the story, to the meth- message, whether you think it's a myth or a legend or whatever. Even if it is just a myth or a legend, there's still a lot of universal truth um, that we should think about. How's your day? <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> I haven't I haven't got into my mind all day long. I'm like, uh, lately, uh, it's really been soaking in because uh, you know I quit the other vices. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I'm pretty happy with the situation. I'm proud of you, man. I think a lot of that, um, a lot of us don't know how to like confront our vices. You know what I'm saying? And um, I've been working on that on myself for a long time. We just got to remember, like, we put our own devils in front of us. <coughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We put we put our bullshit in our way. And we just, we know how to get it. We know how to get around it. We just got to do it. And it's hard, man. It's it hard. is hard, man. It's hard to make decisions and to commit. Yeah. I mean, especially when it comes to your own spirit and your health. Yeah, right. I mean, we'd rather have other people tell us what to do, you know? Well, yeah, man. It's easier when someone's telling you what to do. Well, maybe we need it, right? Like, maybe we need someone to guide us, man. Like I was thinking about this on the way here, like bro, like, like we didn't learn how to eat alone by ourselves. You know, we didn't learn how to like put our pants on by ourselves. We didn't learn how to walk by ourselves and we didn't learn how to ride a bike by ourselves. So how should we expect, like how we, how do, how, how should we expect us as individuals trying to navigate like psychological Man, all I know problems is I did not have a roommate for two years. And living by yourself, like, bro, whatever you want to do, when you want to do it, you fucking do it. Yeah. There's none holding you back. And there's nothing telling you, you know, whether, you know, unless, unless you have your own voice, like, unless you're set for whatever. But like, right. You do what you want when you want to do it. Man, that's... It could be a horror. That's a horrible thing. <laughs> yeah. So it's cool. Like I got a roommate now and uh, it, it kind of puts things in perspective. Like, yo, you can't be a shithead because you got someone else staying here. You ain't trying to wake someone up and fuck someone else's sleep pattern up. You know what I mean? Mm. So I'm really enjoying that. I'm really enjoying not being on drugs. <laughs> I just got to remember it when, uh, when shit's in my face. Well, maybe that's something we could actually talk about, like um, addiction, you know, and like, and this goes into the conversation about serotonin. We were just having like these electrochemicals. Why do we have them? Because you can get addicted to anything. Yeah, Sex, right? yeah. money. Um, Drinking. Yeah, the internet, whatever. Oh my God, the internet, the internet is crazy. Well, there's a, you know, there's like institutes that study the internet. You know what I'm saying? There's like institutes that study the internet because we, we still don't know what it is. You know what I mean? Like, is it a hive mind? <laughs> like, it's like, we, you know, we came out, well, when we were in seventh grade, the internet came out in 95. And so like, that, that, that that became my like reality dude i couldn't wait to get on the internet yeah man yeah because you could 
could do anything. You could figure out you, if you lost the Earthbound guide, you could look up the Earthbound guide. Like, I, I mean, I don't know if it was that extensive, but you could. I don't, I don't know, man. The internet was wild. I remember yeah, AIM, wild. A, AIM chat rooms, ASL question mark question mark. Yeah, what you could find on the internet became so monstrous <laughs> and disastrous. Like, I asked one of my young homies the other day. I was like, hey, uh, you know what an encyclopedia like is? <laughs> yeah. And their, their answer was, yeah, the book with all the words in it. Mm. <laughs> and, like, I just, I laughed because I remember back in the day, you, before internet, there was encyclopedia salesmen mm. that would go door to door. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Dude, like, illiteracy is a real thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I've been posting about that for years. And not a lot of people have picked that one up, you know? And, like, that's a real thing. And, like, if we're not learning about reality, then what chance do we have? Yeah. <laughs> um, and like, you know, back to addiction, like we get addicted to things and we have to confront them for what they are, you know. Um, if, if they don't produce like strength and clarity, then it's probably a vice. You know what I mean? If, it, if, it's some, if a habit is something that produces strength and clarity and other virtues, perseverance, integrity, like it's probably a virtue. Like if, if it teaches you the things, those things. Um, so looking at our habits, I think is how we start that understanding of what a vice is. Like cause vice is a, what is that? Isn't that like a theological term? Like, isn't it like, isn't it like you would say something's a vice because it, it holds you together, holds something together. Uh, it, it it well yeah it holds you sort what, of. And, and I mean you say vice, and I start thinking of you know his heads in a vice. You know, got the you. Whole, yeah. The whole thing about a vice is you're adding pressure to hold together. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like if I I got that right. It's about I mean, right. I, no, I, I like that. It's 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 similar to sort of being constrained and yeah held, and held i mean down, like a vice back. like like a vice like smoking weed or doing cocaine or whatever like right that adds pressure you know you're not supposed to do it you know and we've been told that our whole lives you know yeah i guess i don't know <laughs> all i know is some like smoking weed that shit holds me together yeah that calms me down yeah all the other vices they make me manic kind of yeah um, like you drink too much, you get out of your mind. Sure. You do too much cocaine, you're running around in the same. You're running around in a circle for hours. You know. Right. You do, you do too much crystal, you're just gone for days, manic as hell. Yeah. Well, you're you're sort of possessed, right? Ex yes, yeah, you're, exactly. You're, you're possessed, and so yes, like, yeah, I I definitely can believe that. So I think the vice, like, contributes to that. Uh, uh, you know, one can't fully live. They can't fully flourish as a human if they're held down by vice. You, exactly, you're right. being held down, being held. Yeah. So you're allowing something to possess you, basically, like fear. Um, this is like uh, paranoia, like uh, par uh, anxiety attacks. Yeah. Like that's, I mean, that's a real thing. People have them. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Uh, but that's part of like the phenomena of what we're talking about, like the. For me, my understanding of that is that those are like demons. Like you're being possessed by demons. Okay. And because um, thoughts can be demonic. I mean, anything can be demonic. But for the individual, like, and this is why, I like, this is why what I think about possession, like, like when you're being possessed, like it's because you can't control something. You're being controlled. You're allowing yourself to be controlled by something. Uh -huh. I think that's what I mean by possession. And I, okay. think, I think that that's demonic. Like there are these negative spiritual entities 
that you're giving into. That's what I think. <laughs> Thank you for coming out and sitting with me tonight. This is fun. I, we I haven't sat with you and just chatted in a very long time. I know I missed you, man. How long did you do the Eastern Oil thing? Oh, seven to two thousand, probably about ten years. Wow. Yeah, oh, seven to seventeen. What was the coolest place that you went doing that? I mean, I liked Atlanta. I liked Miami. Oh, oh you went after Miami and did it too? Yeah. Oh, hell we yeah. worked out there, man. I liked Miami. Was, Miami's great. I love it out there. It's so it's so different. Yeah, we also did it in New Mexico. Did you like it out there? Yeah, I think I love New Mexico the best. What part of New Mexico? Albuquerque. There you go, the Kirky. Porque. Did you ever watch Breaking Bad? No. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a huge gap in my cultural resume. Bro, just watch it sometime. It's great. Yo. I've seen, I, I ain't gonna lie, I've seen that show at least 15, 20 times. I've only seen Better Call Saul maybe like three or four. I really got down with it that's like that. It's a trip, man, yeah. It's uh, uh, dude, it really like nails New Mexico that part of town, bro. Yeah, like their fashion and everything, bro. No way, yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, I like New Mexico the most. How come it's so beautiful? I mean, I like to go to Santa Fe a lot and um, hang out, and it's so beautiful, man. Like, man, I remember driving, driving through there at night because you know, it's right there. Going on a road trip to Cali or whatever, just where I worked in New Mexico a lot, and I just remember like it'd be nothing, but then you could see like just the mountains, like a silhouette of a mountain. Yeah, and you're so close to everything. Like, it so, the, the desert is pretty beautiful. Yeah, I love, I've always loved the desert. Yeah. You ever gone out Marfa? Mm -hmm. I like it out there a lot. Yeah, I like it at Marfa too. I've been wanting to explore more out there. I want to go to like Terlingua. Mm -hmm. Check that out. I heard I want, I want to go to the spot in Big Bend where you're on the border. Yeah. There's nothing like uh, nothing like the, the West, right? Like the West is amazing. Uh, I've even been as far as like, have you ever heard of the Salton Sea mm -mm. out in California? Mm -mm. Uh, went out to the Salton Sea. It was uh, overran by sulfur. It smells like sulfur. So Wow. Yeah, bro. It's, it's, it's a trip. Mm. It smells bad. <laughs> That's where a lot of the, our crops are in Southern California. Hmm. Sulfur. I wouldn't be able to describe sulfur. It smells like fart. Oh, does that is that what that is? Gas. It's bad. Yeah, it smells bad. And this that whole salt and sea was like dried up, dead dead fish. Wow. Yeah, it was interesting. It was fun. Sulfur. I'd go back again if I could. Dude. So what, what about? Oh, sorry. I was gonna go ask ahead. if I can, if, like, what about Orida, man? Oh man. Uh, yeah, man. Oregon, Idaho. Yeah. What about it? That was your family worked up there, right? Yeah, they crossed the border. <laughs> they were migrant workers. They jumped on the migrant trail. They ended up, you know, in Oregon, in Oregon, Idaho, picking potatoes. Yeah. Or Ida was there. Well, my grandma peeled potatoes for like 30 years there. My mom did it for a few years and she joined the army. I remember you talking about Idaho a lot. Well, yeah, I was a little kid. I would go to and from there a lot. Yeah. I liked it, man. The North the North was fun. It, I, I mean, I didn't realize how like scary and racist it was until I was older. Like I've had a few weird experiences out there. But like, like I've had more racist experiences up there than I have down here. Yeah. Or I'm probably just used to it here. You know what I mean? I mean, like, up there, I'm on vacation mode. You know what I mean? And then someone comes at, like, comes to me super sideways, and I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Like, of course I know how to speak English, bro. Like, what are you getting at? <laughs> someone told me I speak English well. <laughs> Do you? Dude, like, I didn't know what to say. Like, I, that's... That's a little offensive, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, I was like, what does that mean? I don't get it. Like, what do you mean? 
<laughs> Isn't that amazing? Like, um, San Antonio plays a unique role in in these types of thoughts and conversations. You know, like, well, I mean, we're so diverse. Yeah, six flags flew over Texas, right? So, I have like French and like Kualtican and like Mexican blood. I have like indigenous and all you know what i mean so because my great grandpa was a kualtikan and um like just thinking about like who we are as as a people in san antonio we're very unique you know we have a very fresh perspective on the old and the new worlds kind of like colliding i just think it's such a trip you take a take an hour drive and you're like you know old country fredericksburg (laughs) Yeah. German land, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's nice. Yeah, it's very nice. It's beautiful. They got wineries out there, all that stuff. That's very nice. And you drive an hour and you're in San Antonio where it's just completely different. But I'm happy I'm from here. I loved it down here. Yeah. I love that I stayed down here. Like Absolutely. It's so inexpensive. Back. Yeah, I had to come back, man. You know? And, like, I'm glad I'm back. Um, this gentrification's wild. Hmm. There's, uh, there's, uh, there's this sort of velocity of growth right now in the city. It's moving really quick. People want to like move and do business really quick, and I think that's going to be destructive overall. Uh, if we can't uh, tap into the, you know, understanding the people, what do the what do the people want? Like. Just go to them. Ask them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like, unless city leaders are uh, going to be willing to tap into the pulse of the people, uh, we're, we're, we're going to be underrepresented. But it feels like, I mean, I... We're going to be underrepresented. I mean, we're always going to be underrepresented. Well, we always have been. Yeah, exactly. I mean... But what, what, what is we... Right. Who I mean, are who, we? Do, exactly, do, exactly. Yeah, do, don't we, like, we, we need to redefine we. We as men, we as, like, Hispanic oh, no. men. No, I don't we know. We as Latin, just, Latinx men. What's the we, right? So <laughs> we have, we, Latinx men. We the people, right? What, as Americans? Yeah. Isn't that the we? Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, like, I, I like to see, think of myself as American, because I am American. Yeah. But man, it it gets so overlooked, and you get you get thrown into all these other genres before like you can even be comfortable being we the people, you know? Yeah. So like, do we mean like subcultures? I mean everything. Everything's broken down meticulously now, you know. Yeah, I mean, like we we can't. It's hard for people to work together because of that for that reason, like lack of visions, right? Um, in alignment with one another um but the we the people like we're i thought the what that implied was that we all come together i mean we're all together in this land that's the only thing (laughs) i don't think we'll ever be all on the same page and that's what's kind of cool about being american you know we don't all got we don't all have to follow the same fucking thing sorry yeah i mean hey here what you been jamming lately A lot of Bach. Really? Man. Yeah, a lot of Bach. Yeah. A lot of Baroque. Real dope, you know. Organs. Uh, Arvo Part, Estonian uh, composer. Um, choral music, you know. Wonderful, just high, high art, you know. The best. The best of the best. I, bet I went back, too. I went back kind of not that far back. Jamming a bunch of like Jay Perez. Dog. I've been listening to a bunch of the Hano music, trying to like brush up on my Spanish. Yeah. Uh, like I think I really well, like. I didn't see you at the Conjunto Festival last year. Bro. Oh, I was a word. No, my boy Jose invited me. Shout out Jose, Woodlawn Yacht Club. It was uh, virtual. Oh really? Well, I know he invited me like recently. He was out. Of- no, I'm just joking. Oh, you you busting my balls? I get it. <laughs> I'm sick. 
Hey. This is a, it's a good, it's a good moment for us, man. Oh yeah, man. I, I yeah, think yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a good moment. This is, this is just, it's been, it's been a good day. Like October has been treating me so good. I, I, I don't know if it's a, I have a different mentality on life or what, but October has been good to me. That's good. I'm man. happy with it. Like I'm in a good spot. Yeah. Dude. So what's the next step, man? Uh, what do you mean? Like I got like four different projects I got going on in my mind. Yeah, for sure. Which one are you most four, excited? There's four things I'm trying to like manifest out of my life right now. Uh, well, I guess let me talk about it though. First thing. Go for it. My short term goal right now is just I'm, I'm, I'm going out to Cali with my boy Zerd. We're gonna go to Complex Con. Mm. We're gonna do that. Hopefully next month. That's my short, short, short term goal. Uh, my next goal is you know to kind of boost up this podcast. I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I've been consistent. Fifty one episodes deep. Uh, shout out, shout out Smitty, shout out Gemini Vato, shout out Ams that have character printing, uh, shout out Night Shift Crew, shout out Freddie Casillas, dang, <laughs> the homie, uh, shout out Jake Lopez. Oh man, yeah, yeah. I, I just had a had a breakfast with Ben. Uh, I went out to Little. I took him out to Little Johnny Taco House. Over nice. there off 35. Uh, I had breakfast off 35 today uh, around that area, 35 North. Shout out Ernest Pete. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pete's getting ready to have that baby. But, yeah, so I'm sitting there having breakfast at Little Johnny's across the way. The Splash Town was there. And it was wild, like, looking across the highway and, like, just it's all gone. You know what I mean? None of those slides are there. So it was kind of a trip. It was like, damn, like, that really happened. It's gone. Like, I never went there, but... Just driving by, it was the only cool thing you'd see, like, from a, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, you know you're you're getting ready to hit downtown when you'd see Splash Town when you're coming down 35, like, 35 North, 35 South. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's like when Maggiano, oh, wait, no, Maggio's closed down. <laughs> <laughs> you're a fool for that, bro. It is. <laughs> Shout out Tezel Crew, man. Oh, man. Dude. Going too far back for me. Well, what? bro. Uh, the t- hold on, homie. What are you talking about? The Albertsons <laughs> right there? Yeah, man. Good old Albertsons right there, too. Like Coke Stevens. <laughs> yeah, man. The the Great Northwest, bro. That was, it was, that was uh, something else. Wasn't that fun? It was, yeah, man. Of course. Like, like I said, it was... We had such a fun childhood. Man. Oh, hell yeah. We were able to get shenanigans and stuff like a Real, real shenanigans, real, real shit. A lot of fun. I think we, weren't, we weren't stuck on social media. We had a lot of fun. Uh, playing video games, filming. Like, I had, like, my mom's camera or whatever. <laughs> Listening to, like, Brujeria. <laughs> playing Final Fantasy Seven. Earthbound, bro. And Earthbound. Were you there when I cried, dude? Why? Because of Earthbound? No. Final Fantasy VII. That made you cry? Because I couldn't beat it. <laughs> no, man. I don't. I didn't. I'm, some about the Final Fantasies made me mad. I never really got into them that hard. But, dude, I love RPGs. I like the simple ones. I still play them. Mario RPG. I'm getting ready to play that one again. But, yeah, man. I love the fact that uh, we grew up when we grew up. We had some of the best video games ever. We had some of the best video games ever. Battletoads, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man. Uh, remember the Simpsons one, the four-player one? With the with the, with the the vacuum cleaner? Yeah, man. Marge had the vacuum cleaner. What else was a good one? Uh, Double Dragon. Which one? That one where, like, that guy shoots that girl. I don't remember which one with was that With the machine one? gun? I think it was Double Dragon, too. Remember when uh, Mortal Kombat switch, switched it to sweat instead of blood? <laughs> yeah, no? I do. That was, uh, no, that was NES. I think it was like. A uh, Super NES, sorry. And you had to put a code in to get the blood? Um, yeah, but it was, all it did, this is Super NES, right? All it did was turn the sweat red 
So you, yeah, you, exactly. yeah, you yeah, still yeah. couldn't do like the real fatality. Yeah. That was on Sega Genesis. <laughs> Sega Genesis had all the crazy fatalities. You'd be at the arcade with your my brother and like some dude. I was like in third grade. This is at Rocky J's. Oh my gosh. And R.I.P. Uh, Rocky J's. Diamond Gems or one of these, I forget. Diamond Gems, that was the one closer to the mall, right? Yeah. Uh, Diamond Gems got that place was rowdy, bro. Yeah. That place was... We may have gone there, and yeah, man. Uh, I, saw I mean, that, that, that was like one of the first places I ever saw anyone smoke crack. <laughs> okay, hold on one second. <laughs> That's where I saw Sub-Zero tear that dude's head off with the spine <laughs> still hanging out. I was like in fourth grade. So like, like the, the, in the next few years, like I was loving Mortal Kombat 3 because smoke would open up his chest and drop bombs and blow the world up. <laughs> we have to look that up a little later. I want to see that. That was Mortal Kombat 3 when they were like in the city and like those ninjas were robots and stuff. <laughs> Cyborg and Sector and stuff. Dude. That, well, anyway, anyhow, I mean, yeah, no, I agree. Like the arcade, say more about that. What do you mean? What would you mean? Like, like what's going like on? What was it, what's happening at the arcade at Diamond Gyms, bro? Just a wild place. I like. I just like Rocky J's better. <laughs> I don't even remember. I remember Rocky J's. Um. Oh, but yeah, those arcades were interesting, and and I agree that that they they fundamentally changed me as a thinker immediately. Like as a as a as a little human being growing well, up. Well, like you get to play video games with other people that aren't your family members, so people can be mean to you if they want. <laughs> Dude, when Law Enforcers came out, when what now? Law Enforcers. <laughs> What's that? It's that? It was that cop game, where like you you were, you were the one like shooting at criminals. It was, oh, okay. it was called Lethal Enforcers. It was at Acadiana. oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. Acadiana had it. Oh, really? Yeah, we used to go to Acadiana. Man, I didn't go there until my 20s, but man, I like that. I really like that food there. Yeah. Yeah, they had, they had like, chicken dumplings and stuff. No, I'm serious. The cornbread was amazing. Well, yeah, Cajun seafood, hell yeah. Man. Oh, my Lord. But, dude, that place and that sirloin stockade off of Marbach. I remember I saw... Right by Arcadiana, that, that movie theater, I saw what, Howard Stern there? For real? That movie, the Howard Stern movie. That's cool. Was that when, like, Bev's card store was still there at Westlake? I remember Westlake's was there. Mercado Mall's where I got the Pippins in 97. Hey. Mercado Mall, or 96, sorry. What mall was that? That was Westlake's. Oh, that's right. That's Mercado. right. That's right. Man, yeah, man. It was I don't remember much of it, but I remember I remember they had a big Mervins. Yeah. I think it maybe Dillard's. Montgomery Wards. Yeah. I love that place, Sears. man. Sears. But yeah, you go by these places and they're not even there anymore. I remember um when I was doing the Papa Lock thing, I had to go to Windsor Park Mall. And I can't remember like it's changed. it's it's completely different business. I can't remember what it is. It's some like tech company now. Yeah. And I'm in there, like, you know, I'm opening someone's car door, and I look up, and I see where it used to say Dillard's. Like, the letters were gone, but, like, you could just see the outline. I was just like, dude, that's fucking cool. Dang. <laughs> Man, this, uh, well, this life goes by very quickly, doesn't it? This life goes by very quickly. Just like this hour. We've gone one hour. And I think I'm good. Use the bathroom. Yeah, man. Well, I want to I want to tuck myself in, call it a night. I love y'all. If y'all stayed listening, like, comment, tell me what I'm good at, tell me what I'm whack at. Uh, night sound, night shift, underground sound, volume four, ten twenty one, Namanaki, and ten thirteen. Shout out Scavenger getting his five year anniversary in ten thirteen at break. Shout out. Almost every first Friday at Remedy, you can catch Night Shift doing the thing. Charles, if they want to get a hold of you, how do they get a hold of you? 
at cosmic dot ruination. <laughs> yeah. Stay out of trouble. <laughs>